Thank you, sir, for those kind words. Actually, completely switching gears and talking before seniors, it's really giving me jitters because totally a different topic. And when uh, Dr. Chetan says, then gave me this case, I was wondering what will I talk for 25 minutes on scarlet fever. Then I really found out there was a lot to know about it. So presenting to you before here, a five-year-old A who comes to the hospital with complaints of five days onset of high-grade fever. The mother has noticed an appearance of rash since yesterday and it has progressed since today morning. She is also confused that it could be a mata or what we call amma in Tamil. And if so worried if giving injections or coming to a hospital itself will worsen the condition. So the eyes are normal but he appeared very flushed and his tongue was red. So this was it. So this is what I could get from this. You could see the rash. I'm not sure the pictures are very clear. So postgraduates are here. So what would be your diagnosis or your line of thinking would be? Can somebody come up with the differentials? I mean, all the seniors have discussed here. So I would ask the postgraduates here. <laughs> then it would give away the diagnosis, sir. So we already discussed fever with rash, hepatosplenomegaly and all this. This child just came with fever and a rash and looking a little flushed. Not very, this he was sick looking of course with the fever. Fever was still there. Can you come up please? Anybody? No? Yeah, that is what, obviously the topic was then. Okay, so the first like what she thought. I would be thinking about a measles, but the child was too flushed, not very sickening for the same. Again, because of the flushed appearance, of course, scarlet fever. And in our place, Kawasaki disease is one thing. They will say atypical Kawasaki, and he was started to getting this fever, rash, and then going about. I was thinking about that. Or just a plain viral exanthem. It could be a viral infectious mononucleosis too. And child is not sick looking. So but really you could think about toxic shock syndrome. So this was my line of thinking. I didn't have any organomegaly or any other thing to go about. So why now? So scarlet fever. Because the close differentials, you know, the treatment modality of each of these differentials is so varied. And as a clinician, my point here is I have to think about what to give the right treatment there. So here it is most commonly associated with the bacterial pharyngitis in school age. And here antibiotics will become mandatory, whereas in the other differentials, antibiotics is not. And in KD, it's absolutely a different type. So I'll have to know the diagnosis very clearly. So that's why this becomes so important. The causative bacteria, we all know strep pyogenes. But the only difference is here, the organism is not the fever, but the endotoxin produced by the organism is a causative factor for here. So epidemiologically, when we looked into it, when you even see the Google, it was ranked as the most severe infectious disease before the widespread use of antibiotics. So this person is the Giovanni Filippo in Grecia, who in 1553 has described this disease in so much of detail. It was such, uh, associated with such high mortality rate, but people were really, the whole villages where, uh, where uh, people were stopped from entering into this village, it was isolated. But after the advent of antibiotics, this disease sort of went into complete, uh, we, we, we don't even think about it. But what has really happened in uh, 2014, 13, and now in recently, there has been a resurgence of disease. And the papers in UK have said, coming back of the Victorian era of disease, even in the era of antibiotics. So this was the old type which was played which was put up in 1880s for the medical college students where it clearly even today it still stands very valid the measles and scarlet though the rash is the same the flushing of the children makes us to clearly differentiate the symptoms mostly in the clinical practice you would have just brushed it off as a measles and given it probably would have missed this uh, this flushing here and see you could have seen the quarantine which has been put up in all the ho ho houses there so this was how high is the wall of the town telling the importance of the physicians, the health officers, the quarantine. It looks like a COVID for me where all the other things is isolation, effectiveness. So, but this was the, they said that scarlet fever was one of the major symptoms that came up in the century. Now this, the epidemics was in the 19th century, you could see. However, if you look at it, 
the cases of scarlet fever in England and Wales have slowly started to be on the rise. And in Northern Ireland, this is nothing but 2015. And this in 2022, there was a spike here. Okay. So which means not, we are not very far. Probably you're just missing out. In September 2022, the Europe and US had this outbreak. This has been very unique in that it really appeared out of sync with seasons. There was no seasonality. It came in a very non-seasonal non period. And it also had a higher mortality than normal. That was what was terrifying. If not, the mortality was equivalent to that of an ant pre-antibiotic era. Still having a scarlet fever and having a mortality in this era of an antibiotic that was easily available was something I think probably the organizers thought about getting this topic done here. So what was documented was the emerging macrolate resistance as was very much alluded due to the COVID and all the other things. The weakened herd immunity because we as a generation have not even tuned to think about it. The environmental factors, again being an environmental uh, activist, I would say the changing environmental scenario probably have led it. The absence of a vaccine because people thought that antibiotic itself was good enough for that. But now, yes, it's coming up. And they, it also increased with, the, uh, there was a lot of crowding which is happening in school going children now. So that could be the reason. The epidemiology in China and Hong Kong was way different from that of the UK. Though the, 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 the incidence, the diseases were the same, it really varied in the incidence. The resurgence of scarlet fever has been reported here. Children 3 to 9 years accounted for about 83% of the total cases. The outbreaks in Hong Kong belong to the M12 lineage, but what was different from that of uh, the other UK component is it had a multidrug resistant encoding also. So that was more worrying for people and it set about a great amount of uh, epidemiological evidence into why was the reason there was a resurgence here and they could attribute it to, to the two phages like prophages encoding streptococcal exotoxin SSA spec and SPD1 so you will be wondering why I was talking about environmental condition here because the spread from UK to the Hong Kong and then to the China was attributed to the environmental changes there That's, that is the reason here they said that environment could be the reason for the resurgence and the prophage when it underwent changes from the UK into the Hong Kong and went landed up into the mainland China. It had an epidemiological difference. And over the thing, it has acquired a multidrug resistant phage 2, which is capable of spreading to the other uh, mutant organism. So that's why the pathogenesis also becomes very important for weak clinician for the infection from the pyrogenic toxin producing group A streptococcus. They are called as a super antigen. So this has been directly associated with scarlet fever. You can see the arrows that SFA1 and SPC, this, they produce a pyrogens that are capable of uh, producing numerous inflammation, pro inflammatory changes like in inhibition of chemotactic recruitment and inducing inflammation, chemokine degradation. And along the way, when they're going to acquire a multidrug resistance, it becomes really difficult for you to treat. So, we know, I'm just going, to, because you are clinicians, we already know that it's an, it costs like it has an acute pharyngitis. But one of the factors here is when they undergo mutation and when they develop a drug resistance to it, the rash may be coming after five to seven days. By then, the intensity of your throat infections would have actually come down. So it remains as a differential along with other factors where you don't get the throat infection for you to say that it is a scarlet fever. And the swelling and cervical adenopathy are additional components that may confuse you. By the time they come, they would have already had your peeling of the rash. So you would be tempted to think about Kawasaki disease, where the treatment of the scarlet fever finishes off within 100 rupees. And if you're going to think about KD, you're going to spend lakhs of rupees with immunoglobulin. So the rash, we need to be very clear. As a, it's a diffuse erythematous eruption that generally occurs in association with pharyngitis. But if it's a delayed manifestation, the pharyngitis might not be that significant. The rash blanches with pressure. There is a numerous small papular elevations. That's what actually already Sir said. It was a sandpaper appearance. But what makes it very clear is the strawberry tongue and your flushing and which is blanching with pressure. It starts in the groins and arpits and it's accompanied by a circumoral pallor that is very, very classical and significant that comes in no other disease. This is the triangle of phileto. I'm very sure we wouldn't even have read in our undergraduate days, but uh, maybe one of the questions for the competitive exams. Other than that, we wouldn't even have thought about it. But this is one, one of the very important differentials here. Cheeks looks very erythematous. Diagnosis, 
again that is why the clinic the clash was so much eluded upon because it's mostly clinical cbc is a leukocytosis we have seen numerous case scenarios from the morning which has alluded to the point that cbc is not really very beneficial but in this particular case probably leukocytosis will help you throat or nasal culture has been spoke uh, spoken about but then uh, are we getting the right right uh, specimen that's the problem and especially in children to take a nasal uh, throat culture very clearly it's a prob it's a problem and this rapid antigen detection kits uh, it's a 95% sensitivity and it is with the growing importance in the western they have uh, uh, the way they have technologically advanced in the rapid antigen detection kits they're talking it on par with culture but what about in india do we have the redt in all the centers and it is as effective as that we have a doubt but they say that in western redt doing an redt in a child who has a pharyngitis with rash really you can give the antibiotics here there will be otherwise you know you will have to and you you have to think about giving an antibiotics doing an redt tells you that you could go ahead and this is one condition where you start antibiotics right away so that is why rapid antigen detection kit here culture you have to wait for about 48 to 72 hours whereas in radt the results comes in 2 hours so in us now whenever a child presents with a fever and rash they and with the pharyngitis radt has become almost the point of care testing but whereas in india we are still lagging behind probably there has been a study by uh, sbs sir from child trust hospital where they have told the importance of uh, rapid antigen detection kits and but we started using very cost effective but again it depends on the lab it depends on the technology centers here how about the aso and anti dnas again the serological testing greatly differs because serological differs depends on the antibodies which is being produced and that again depends on the antigens which is being produced each of the manifestation of streptococcal is very different now this is because of the pyrogen exo exotoxins so how much of this exotoxin is capable of producing the antibodies to give an aso titer positive and anti dna is positive is something we have to be thinking about so this is not that effective in case of a scarlet fever whereas it is very effective in other cases of a rheumatic fever and all those condition because the antigen which is capable which is producing that manifestations are different so that is why serological testing has taken a back seat whereas radt is definitely useful the gold standard is the blood culture the zone of hemolysis is almost diagnostic for this and with the advancement we have a rapid conventional methods that lansfield technique for the benefit of the postgraduate this is why we are calling them as group a streptococcal infection gas because the lansfield is a technique which is used for us to classify this thing and it belongs to the a category but now automated systems are used and we get the signaling in by about 24 to 48 hours itself and but one of the epidemiological importance is this division into the subtypes of m protein and just china the m protein we already found out that that was a reason it also developed micro, uh, microbiological resistance too so this the the genotyping is used for epidemiological purposes and when we are de detecting a case of scarlet fever and if you are an institute which is dealing with thousands of cases it's better you have an epidemiological evidence for the same because you may be uh, the the, uh, the the scarlet fever which has been produced might have a drug resistant component might have a pro prophage associated with it so the clinical importance lies in the scarlet fever in an important differentials one is the this measles this rubella exanthem subitum and parvovirus this is a typical of a maculopapular rash these are the very closest differentials i already told you measles very much resembles that the only thing is it is very flushed appearance when compared to the other so the rubella again the rash is almost similar to that but the only thing is you miss out on the pharyngitis you will have this posterior auricular lymphadenitis in contrast to the anterior or the uh, which we get here and it out uh, here i told you it starts with the groin and spreads up here but in uh, rubella i'm going to get it from the thighs and then spreads to the tongue the measles is again it's very easy it's in the retro uh, uh, retro auricular region the other causes which we have to be worried about is the infectious mononucleosis kawasaki disease because that is the closest to many measles kawasaki and scarlet fever almost we would put it together and when you're seeing it on the seventh day you will get the conjunctive it is the flushed appearance might also come in a kd so have it as that meningococcemia and the dress in rome and duck fever which was already discussed is more in a very sick looking child which is not the condition here so this is for you to tell the different type of rashes that can come the measles if you can see it's almost full body here starting from the retrograticulum the scarlet fever as we said is more in the groin and then it's spreading up and the cheek the flushed appearance which you're going to get in the cheeks is the diagnostic here 
the german measles almost have a resemblance that of the measles that's why it's just called the same but then the spread is not very acute like measles and fifth disease again it's got a flushed appearance just like a scarlet fever but the difference is the rash is much more bigger and it's not the typical sandpaper variety here the roseola we don't have the chuck, uh, flushed appearance and in chicken box it's very easy to differentiate it's just the vesicular formation so roseola and varicella i'm very sure you're going to differentiate but what is the closest is measles scarlet fever and the german measles so the then the management as a clinicians once you make the diagnosis it's very easy it's a spread of pre prevent the spread prevent mainly the complications both the uh, sequelae of it both the separative and non separative complication and you would want to start the antibiotics because you really want to shorten the course of illness you don't want to be giving an ivig here so the antibiotic choice is penicillin or amoxicillin and again there there was a difference between like to give the oral penicillin or the ahivi or should i go with benzethine penicillin so what has been recommended is oral penicillin is the drug of choice because i i mean you don't get the penicillin like iv the short acting one in all our institutes and using a benzethine penicillin is as effective as oral it's recommended for those people whom you are not sure they are going to complete the 10 days course of antibiotics that's the point here they have to complete the 10 days course of antibiotic to prevent the complication and giving a dose of benzethine penicillin in a child who would not complete so that's a better alternative than giving an oral penicillin that is the only time where i uh, giving an injectable is beneficial in this condition allergy to penicillin or a first generation cephalosporin will want a warrant a clindamycin or erythromycin so the penicillin we is given at 250 mg i'm very sure you know the dosage amoxicillin at 50 mg per kg still not at the higher dosage now which has been recommended because we are still uh, we are showing sensitivity to the penicillin group and benzethine penicillin single dose only in that condition when you are not sure the child is going to come of course you will have to be very clear when you are going to give it you have an emergency situation emergency conditions there you have the all the uh, because we have stopped giving benzethine penicillin even for rheumatic fever for individuals with penicillin allergy you would be wondering why am i putting heflex in here penicillin allergy there are two types again type 1 and the other type it, uh, penicillin is one drug allergy which we can study for studying all types of drug allergy so only with the type 1 when it's ige immediated probably you will not start with keflex the other types you can go ahead and give the uh, keflex in or cefadroxil in but if you don't want to take the chance please go ahead with azithro clinda and clarithromycin at the usual dosage but the problem here is you have to complete the 10 days course of antibiotics the complications we already know it's a separative or non separative separative is a peritonsillar abscess retropharyngeal abscess the cervical adenitis and very rarely invasive group a disease probably in immuno compromised child these are things which i would really think about and non separative is rheumatic and psgn somehow the neurological manifestations as pandas that comes along with streptococcal has not been very much alluded upon in a child with scarlet fever and probably that's why they are insistent on a 10 days course of antibiotics for here so in summary the scarlet fever i think i'm well believe in the time okay scarlet fever once a serious disease in control with antibiotics now showing a resurgence probably due to various factors it's capable definitely if it's going to be a resurgence there's going to be a multi drug resistance we are going to land into serious complications we need to have a very good knowledge even now because of the closest differentials which can change the man management for us diagnosis again clinical genotyping definitely for epidemiological purpose and insist on completing the course for 10 days in this case let history not repeat itself we always say history repeats itself but we don't want this to happen because scarlet fever can erase total towns here so this was a courier paper that used to come up that used to warn everybody about and how to they have given the treatment also for the same telling about it is like looking like covid they were re re reporting on the deaths that have been occurring in each town and they have also given give a 1 teaspoon of lemonade or vinegar on honey and for a scarlet fever with pharyngitis we are still following we could give the honey here so let's get the history uh, not repeat itself i thank the organizers for this topic and for giving me the chance to talk on this thank you